Hello, everybody. My name is Chuck Sheely. I'm the content and creative director with Making Music Magazine. And today we're here to do a spotlight, a product spotlight featuring the Yamaha YDS-150 digital saxophone, a brand new creation from Yamaha. And uh, today to help us talk about this uh, new instrument is Jonathan Goldman, the Yamaha Wind Instruments product manager, along with Austin Snowden, the Yamaha Winds and Strings product specialist. And we also have uh, our good friend, Lucia Sormiento, the saxophone player to show us how it works. And so uh, we're all here and uh, you're all here. So we're glad that you're here with us and we'll get started. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. So uh, my first question about a digital saxophone uh, is in, uh, how it relates to the traditional analog saxophone. For instance, so if I hear Sidney Bechet, if I hear John Coltrane, I know who that is just by hearing the horn. I know who Coleman Hawkins is and how he sounds. And while an instrument offers a scope of possibilities in sound and timbre, etc., cetera, um, it's really the artist making decisions and how they relate to it through breath and embouchure and so on that creates it uh, to be a special and unique sound or, and, or even art, its own art. How, what have you done? And how does the, uh, the digital saxophone handle this aspect of, of, the, of, of the, the sound? It's very interesting to me. Sure. So I, I just want to kick it off. Um, I kick off my response by saying um, the, the YDS-150, the digital saxophone, was really developed to um, the, the main mission, a global mission of Yamaha is to create more music makers. And, you know, while this instrument will find, uh, I think, a comfortable home with people who are already established players or people advancing through their scholastic or professional careers as players, we really designed this to speak to a couple of different key customers. And one of those is somebody who's never played a wind instrument before, somebody who's never played music before. Uh, and the other person is somebody that, that played saxophone when they were younger and for whatever reason in life took them in different directions and they would like to re-engage and recapture that musical part of themselves uh, at a different point in their life. And so this was designed to break down some really specific barriers, uh, which a lot of people can find intimidating to playing the saxophone. The main one is being getting a good sound right out of the box right from day one, getting a sound that you can be comfortable with, that you wouldn't mind, you know, playing in front of somebody else. And part of the way we do that is by um, kind of removing some of the difficulties in, that are inherent in an acoustic saxophone with making sound on day one. Uh, I myself, is a, I'm a trombone player. Okay, when I try to play a woodwind instrument, it doesn't sound good, ever you know, it sounds really bad. And so for some people that can be very uh, disheartening right off the bat if it's something that they really wanna do. So the YDS-150, the way it's set up, uh, the way the mouthpiece and reed combination works with the breath sensor, it literally removes that barrier. This is as easy to play out of the box as a recorder. You take it out, it comes set up, it comes pre-set up with the reed and the ligature already attached. Uh, in the right position, you can put batteries in it and you can start playing right away. And the first sound that you make sounds the way it's supposed to sound. Um, so I would say that from a player perspective, if you're looking to be able to create your own voice with this instrument, there are opportunities to do that uh, via finding a sound that works good as a starting point and then using the mobile app to uh, fine tune some of the key aspects that you're looking for in the sound, you can adjust pitch, you can adjust the breath sensor, you can adjust certain key sensitivities, um, you can manipulate the effects that are built into the mobile app. But really for, our, for the main target customers of this product, uh, it's really about breaking down that initial barrier of what to do with your embouchure and how that reacts to the instrument. So you can literally just pick it up, turn it on, blow into it and a saxophone sound is going to come out of the speaker. And if you have the headphones on, it's going to come out 
through the headphones. So it, does this product, is it audible by itself as a horn or do you need a line out into an amp to hear it? No, it does have a small speaker on board. Lucia, if you want to hold up the YDS there, um, you see that right there by where her hand, yeah, see where she's pointing to that kind of circular yeah. um, stick out. That's a speaker that's on board. Um, and so one of the cool things that that, aside from giving an audible sound and you can adjust the volume within the room, um, the other thing that the speaker does is there is a, um, it creates a vibration, obviously a speaker cone is gonna vibrate a little bit. There's a sound tube that's attached to that speaker that touches that speaker. And that sound tube travels down and it actually also comes in contact with the brass bell that's attached to the bottom of the YDS. And so it does create a sense of vibration that's felt throughout the instrument from the mouthpiece all the way down to the, the in your fingertips and the keys. Um, now, is it the same exact that you would feel like in your teeth and your, and your lips and your fingertips as an acoustic saxophone? No, but it does offer a percentage of that realistic feeling that a player is used to having. So it gives that more authentic saxophone experience. And that's gonna be, I think, really key for somebody, especially if it's a person that's just getting started. So when they transition to an acoustic saxophone, if they choose to do that, there's gonna be a familiarity with not only the keys, and the key positioning, but also just the physiological effect that playing the saxophone has. So how about, um, since it's digital, do you have different options to switch from tenor, alto, berry, et cetera? Can you do that with it? Or is it one horn? I know there, I know there are different sounds on it. Yeah, I'm gonna pass this over to Austin really quick because he's been our resident developing guru on this. Uh, yes, there's, there are, um, there's actually 73 preset sounds loaded on there. Um, alto, soprano, tenor, berry, and then some synth sounds and even some traditional instruments such as, uh, uh, Irish pipes and, and other, uh, clarinets. Uh, no clarinet, but with what is really cool. And I'm kind of slowly discovering myself by starting on one of those preset sounds and using the customization tool in the app, you can get those sounds close to other instruments. Um, so the other day I made a, a saxophone kind of sound like an electric guitar. Um, I had an interesting question and I'm, I'm piddling it now trying to replicate a bassoon sound in some way, shape or form. Oh. Um, so there is flexibility there. It's not built in that way at the moment. Um, but there are tons of options to get you close to what you're looking for. Sure. Yeah, in addition to the 73, there's 20 user presets that can be uh, created, customized to the player, defined and stored in the onboard memory of the YDS. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you do that, if you find that you create that clarinet sound or that if Austin creates that bassoon sound that he's looking for, you know, he can store that in one of the uh, 20 user banks. Mm -hmm. So that means you could effectively bring five different instruments to the gig because they're all preset. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and to make life even easier, uh, you can transpose in the app too. So if you're reading off of a lead sheet, um, it's super simple. Or, or if, you know, if you're in that situation where you just want to play and see all day long, you can make that transposition in the app and don't I have see. to, you know, okay. overwork mm -hmm. your brain. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that makes it very accessible to, uh, new players i can see i noticed that yamaha all across and all its lines are are making uh, things to be easier to play in the in the sense of physics uh, the violins are for smaller hands i saw and, and so on same thing with drums and guitars so it's uh, exciting to see that you're doing that to enable more musicians um lucia what do you think about that thing do you, do, do, does it feel like with, like when uh, jonathan was talking about how it feels and it vibrates. You enjoy that aspect of it as a player? Definitely. I am mostly amazed at how it's the exact same fingerings as the saxophone. So I personally have been using it to practice while watching Netflix or whenever my roommates are sleeping and I have to um, be quiet and I can't really play my actual horn. And the cool part about it is that it translates directly because it has the exact same positions of the fingers. So that's the use that I have been giving it to it personally. 
So where you put headphones on it or something and uh, you can practice? Yes, with headphones, Me? usually. Let's hear it. Sure. I think everybody wants to hear it. I have three user presets that I personally like to use. One is the harmonica one. The other one is a synth. Uh, and the third one is the tenor sound that I like the most that reminds me of my own tenor. Um, so here I go. So you won't be able to hear me talk anymore. Thank you. So are you playing in, um, you know, a traditional key? Uh, uh, you know, like the, was that a tenor? Yes, that was the tenor, yeah. uh, the tenor sound. And it is, I would say it's transposed to B flat. So it's exactly the same sounds that I would have on my actual tenor. Mm -hmm. And did you customize that sound or is that a stock preset? Um, that is a stock preset. It's the one that I like the most. Cool. Right. Sounds great. Sounds very good. So Chuck, one thing I want to mention, you know, Lucia talked about how the keys are the same, the, are the same setup as a regular saxophone. So the key setup and the key positions are actually taken directly from the Yamaha Custom EX uh, Mark II Alto sax. And then they made some minor modifications for the hand position being in a, a soprano sax playing position. But for the most part, those key that key setup and the key positions are taken directly from the custom EX Alto. So were those handset modifications for ergonomic reasons or for digital, you know, mechanical reasons? I think it was just because the, the hands are in a slightly different position. I see. So a couple, especially like with the right hand, they're mm -hmm. adjusted just slightly uh, because you're going from playing in a your hands being in a vertical position to more of a horizontal out in front of you kind of it's just your wrist is in a different position so you know they wanted it to move a little more ergonomically so regarding that that first stage the read do, is it a real read you know that they have to replace or is it it's a synthetic it? it is a synthetic read uh and uh, it does ship with an extra one as well so if it does get broken um or if it does chip uh then you can replace it uh but um austin why don't you i'm going to pass this over to you again because you've done some experimenting with different setups there yeah so it is a synthetic read and what some of the experimenting john's talking about is i i took that read and put it on an acoustic horn and i put a cane read on the yds to see what would happen and if you if you bite and blow hard enough, the synthetic reed will vibrate. Um, it's it's not the sound you typically want from an acoustic saxophone, but it it will vibrate. Um, they they make it so hard to vibrate though, because on the YDS you don't want the reed vibrating, um, because with the breath the breath sensor is where the sound is generated from, not from a reed moving. So when I put a cane reed on the YDS and got it to vibrate, you get this really weird kind of flutter uh, kickback sound um, that interrupts the breath sensor. So the, the synthetic reed, it works great for the YDS. You technically can use it on an acoustic saxophone. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but that being said, hypothetically, if both your synthetic reeds get crunched in one way or another, any reed can fit. As long as it's an alpha sax read, it'll it'll fit on the YDS. You just ideally don't want it to vibrate. And then, like as Austin was saying, the uh, the mouthpiece, uh, even though it says DS on it for digital saxophone, it's actually based on the stock Yamaha 4C alto mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So in theory, yeah. like if you drop this mouthpiece and it breaks, you could run to your local music store, you know, or quick order a stock Yamaha 4C Alto and then just use the regular ligature and the synthetic read on that and it'll work. Mm -hmm. It'll yeah, work the, like it's supposed to. Yeah, the, the DS mouthpiece that comes with it, it's it works completely like a normal 4C. That mouthpiece on an acoustic horn with a cane reed and the ligature, you can you can play on it just like you could any other standard mouthpiece. Now, you said that this is, it's obviously an electric product being digital. Is that is that from batteries, uh, Edison or Phantom Power? How do, how do you power it? So we've got, uh, it's got a battery pack on the, uh, it can hold four AAAs on the back if you want to be on the go. Uh, it also has a, and Lucia's showing back there um, on the, on behind it. Yep. There you go there. Got the batteries. And then it has a USB micro B connection, uh, micro B port. So you can plug it into a computer and it'll run off computer power. Uh, but you can also, like I know Austin has used an external like mobile device charger with the USB plugged into that. Mm -hmm. And you can stick that in your pocket. Um, you could, I don't know, find a way to attach something small to the back of the YDS and have that extended battery life, but it'll work uh, that way as well. It cracks me <laughs> up how cool this stuff gets. It's amazing what, what you can do. How long does the, uh, the power last? How long can you play before you can't? I don't know, Lucia, have you tried messed around with that? I, I it, it all depends, I think, a lot on how much you use it. Um, so I think with regular use, you get a pretty reasonable amount of hours. Um, I haven't seen, I haven't seen any uh, like a technical data on the average battery life of it. Obviously, if you're, you if you've got it plugged into a computer or something that's plugged into a wall, then you can pretty much go as long as you want to. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it all just depends on how much you're playing. I've had a set of batteries with the one at my desk. I think I've been the same set of batteries in for about a week and a half, but I only play this thing for about 10 or 15 minutes a day at best. Um, so as long as you're shutting it off in between, you'll be okay. But if I was an actual saxophone player that uses it daily, like Lucia or Austin, then I might not get as much, uh, much longevity out of the batteries. Two to four to sometimes six hours. Would it make that distance, you think? Could I'll, I'll say from gig and last for three hours or whatever. I think three hours is definitely, yeah, definitely. reachable, maybe four or six. I'll, I'll admit the batteries that I put in mine were uh, from a remote that I had laying around, so they weren't fully charged. But I think I got at least four <laughs> before they finally died on me. Um, I really like using the external battery pack to it just because I am playing it so much. And this pack can last me you know, several days with me playing for hours a day even. And yeah, like John said, just put it in my pocket that way. I only have one wire interfering with me. Um, Very discreet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it would be really great to just hear a little more from Lucia and hear her talk a little bit more about her overall experience. Of course. You know, just, she's had it and I think she's been playing it with the exception of maybe Austin. I think she's had been jamming on it longer than most anybody at this point. So, so okay. yeah, something I would like to add about my experience with it is that um, I am I am a very short person. I'm 5'3", and I play the tenor saxophone because I love it. Um, but I have experienced, like, you know, back pain because it's a big, heavy instrument that some, at times it has uh, prevented me from practicing for a long time or you know, playing as much as I would like to. And I have been using this because it's very light. I don't even, I think it might be even lighter than my computer. So in my experience, um, that's, that has been one of the, the biggest pros of this instrument. Um, yeah, so should I play? Let's do it. Please do.
another aspect about the product is it's very affordable. If I recall correctly, it's right around a thousand dollars, a bit more. Yes. So the MSRP is a thousand seventy eight. Um, you should be seeing these uh, around uh, on the internet at street price. It's seven ninety nine ninety nine. The main, one of the main points behind the design is that, is to make this thing easy, approachable, and fun. You know, we don't, it, it shouldn't take that long if anybody wants to be able to get up and running uh, in time to annoy their families during the holiday season with, uh, you know, holiday carols and songs. You know, I, it, it, it's really, I'm looking forward to being that person in my family. Yeah, well, I, I was that person. My mom used to ask me, honey, is that hard to play? No, mom. Well, it sure is hard to listen to. You know, so <laughs> this is <amazing. laughs> so, okay, folks, that wraps up another compelling episode of Making Music Magazine and one of our product spotlights. Today, uh, we want to thank Jonathan, Austin, and Lucia for stopping by to demonstrate and explain this exciting new Yamaha product, the YDS-150 digital saxophone. Uh, very good instrument for those of you wanting to get into the saxophone or uh, reacquaint with it. So if you, uh, if you enjoy these, we have product spotlights all the time. Stop by and see us routinely. We do them all the time. You can also find uh, these spotlights through our, our social media platforms, all at Making Music Mag. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Keep playing music. Stay cool.